Welcome back to another episode of the Course Creation Incubator. I'm Gina Onativia, your host, your course coach, and your digital strategist here to help you get your course done, marketed, and build the online course business of your dreams. Now, I'm excited for this final session in our how-to series. So let's recap, shall we? We've talked about scripting in episode 67. You learned my seven-step formula for scripting with structure. Then in episode 68, we talked about how to get more content done in less time. And finally, as a third session in this series, we're talking about how to nail your presence on camera. Because let's be honest, I get a lot of questions, okay, and I hear a lot of fears about showing up on camera, whether it's preparing for your course content or going live or giving virtual talks. And if you're listening, you likely know how big video is for our businesses as course creators. First and foremost, for our courses, more and more students want to see your face on camera. Even if you're delivering your course via slides with audio, I do recommend you record at least an introduction to that course direct to camera. And secondly, for marketing your course, you get rewarded for showing up on video with social media. It is critical to what we do as course creators. So we want to master this on-camera presence as much as possible. For this topic, I've gone right to the source, someone who knows how to connect on camera, my dear, dear friend, Don Eason. And I've talked about Bo Eason on this podcast before in terms of how to share a powerful personal story and some other pieces of content. Right beside Bo Eason is Dawn, helping to run his business, his marketing, his events. Dawn was an actress before she started producing Bo's off-Broadway show, Run to the Litter, and now she runs all operations for Bo and everything he does. Now, Dawn is an absolute freaking powerhouse, and we get to collaborate on all of Bo's marketing campaigns, his content, his digital courses. And now Dawn has her own event, Story to Stage, which I love collaborating on with her. So Dawn's going to help us get more comfortable in front of the camera so you can connect with your potential students like never before. Because I want to help you get out of your head and into connecting to who you really are and why you're here to serve. So let's listen in. Dawn, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Gina. So I want to talk more about how we can get comfortable delivering content for social media or delivering our courses or uh, delivering your course live. And you to me are the expert, you and Bo. So I thought we'd start off with what are the, some of the biggest fears or mistakes that you see course creators or new online entrepreneurs making when they stream or deliver content? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, you always have to be working on who you are and what your message is. So as you're like working through your course, you, and you think, okay, I'm going to build this whole platform. I'm going to build this course. I'm going to sell it. But then people forget about the true essence of who they are and that customers are always buying you. So rather than just getting too deep in the, you know, your, your, online marketing campaigns and your funnels and, you know, that every piece of your course is like, you know, perfect. You also have to say like, are they buying me? Are they buying my story? Are they buying my expertise and what I'm teaching? Because that's what they're going to connect with first. They're not even going to see your course, right? They're not going right. to see your course until you make the sale. So how are you making that sale and what is the most effective way to do that? And that's probably the first question that people should be asking. Who they are and who, and how are they authentically showing up, right? Yeah, because okay. people are buying other people. They're buying you, they're buying your brand, you know, they're buying your story first. Okay, I love that. So let's talk about some of the steps that we can do to better prepare for say, like say we're filming our courses, okay? Like uh, say we have a day set and maybe we're DIYing, maybe we hired uh, a local crew to come in. How do you prepare or how does Bo prepare for a full day of shooting? Yeah, you know, I think how Bo and I prepare is, is very differently. Um, I'm definitely more like, all right, let's do this. Like I can read <laughs> off a teleprompter. Um, even when Bo and I both were actors, uh, professional actors in Hollywood, tons, tons of television and film work. Um, and even then Bo and I prepared much differently. So uh, 
you know, it's, it's your preparation style. It's like, if you think of like how you used to do homework in college, right? Like, right. or the night before a test, do you cram it all in? Do you feel better if you're fresh and off the cuff and more natural, or do you want to be really rehearsed and prepared? And, um, like I said, Bo and I prepare very differently. He's very rehearsed. Um, he needs to know the content. It has to get in his body, in his bones. Um, he has to, really believe it. It has to be connected to him um, in a very, very, uh, I'm just declining a call, a very um, authentic way. I feel like the more I think about it, sometimes it, it, I, I, you know, I get a little bit more nervous or I'm too worried or I'm, it's trying to be a certain way. So I'm much better when I have less pep preparation, um, but still, you know, you've got to be warmed up. You've got to be ready. You've got to take your breaths. You've got to know that you're grounded, that your feet are on the floor. Like you can't just be like, you know, you know, disconnected, um, not in touch with who you are and what you have to say. So there's things you can do to, to warm up and to be prepared in that way. Um, but it's just to say that definitely there's people that have different preparation styles. So um, that's something that you should think about when you're looking at like, how do I get ready for, for my, my day on camera? Okay. I love this distinction that you and Bo have completely different styles, right? And we all have to find our own path. So talk me through though, a couple of days before, like you and I have worked on a product together. I've sent you scripts. What are you thinking when you go through your scripts or through your content? What questions are you asking? You know, I want to make sure that, um, I mean, I really trust my team, so I don't have to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> You've spoiled me, Gina. So I really am like, this looks great. Um, you know, I'll look for a phrase or a word or something that just doesn't feel right that I know I wouldn't say or Bo yeah. wouldn't say. Um, also, I think taking your script and rehearsing it a few times just to make sure, you know, it's funny, things are written much differently than the way they're performed. And um, a lot of times we'll actually record Bo and then put it into script format. Because if you try to put something into script format that isn't the way it's spoken or the way he intended it to be spoken, um, it's more difficult for him. So it's just about like looking at the content, making sure that you feel like, okay, this this resonates with me. It has a good flow to it. Um, there's transitions in there that I feel like I have those moments where I can transition and then jump back to the script, right? Because there's a lot of that's memorized and then there's some that isn't. So what can I do to take a breath? What can, you know, are there moments written in the script where I can have a glass of water and refocus and regroup and know exactly where I am in the script? So I think you know, we were trained as performers and actors and you have a script in your hand and you have lines and you learn how to take those lines off the page and deliver them on camera um, in a way that's connecting and engaging and really kind of feeling the emotion of that line. So even though you're talking about a course or you're talking about a product, it's the same thing, right? So it's taking those moments, looking at the script and going, how can I make this paragraph about my course come alive? What makes me excited about it? So I've trained a lot as an actor and I don't necessarily have to do all that pre-work, but when I, when I was younger and I had to do pre-work on scripts, it, it would be the same that I would want you to do on your pre-work with your scripts. What do I love about this product? What do I love about this course? Who needs this course? Like if it was just me and this one person, like what would I share with them that would, that would make it seem um, so necessary for them to have, right? Like how can I, maybe when I'm talking about their struggles or the reason they need this course, how can I empathize with them? How, like, what are some of the things they're going through? So a lot of times in character work or in script preparation, you're looking at building out a sub story to that script. And I would say the same thing is true with your script for videos and for courses. What's that story underneath the text? Who are you talking to? How are they feeling? Why are they struggling? What are they about? What are you feeling? Why are you, why are you the expert? Why can this course help you? So it's like you have the script, but then you have the stories behind the script that help infuse it with emotion, with connection, with um, uh, a real need for, 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 for this information. 
Okay, this is amazing. So I see it, and this is in your body, like you said. So I see it's almost like two rounds that you kind of go through where it's like a technical and an emotional. In the technical, you're asking about the transitions, right? You're saying like, where can I take a breath? Uh, and also I know you do this and you do this subconsciously is you think, do I care as the student? Because I know also when you're looking at your scripts, you're saying, why do I need this? Or is this really valuable information? Or can we put this somewhere else? Like, can we put this in a PDF? You're, that's something that's automatic for you. So I feel like that's on the technical side. And then there's that emotional check where you're asking all these wonderful questions. Like, what do I love about this course? What does this person really need? What's the story behind the script? So it's kind of like this two pronged approach that you're doing subconsciously. Right. Right. Like I don't even think about it anymore, but like just in you asking me these questions. And I think we do this a lot when we, when Bo and I are teaching story to our clients and, um, you know, we have year long clients, we have a three day event and people train with Bo and, and on their personal stories. Right. So it's the same training when you're looking at a script, when you're looking at your story script about your personal story, we do this amazing exercise where we have you write a point of view of another character in that story. So you have your point of view, your expression of the story, but there's other characters and they all have points of view and they all have something to say about their version of the story. So it's just an exercise that we do because it, it, it informs your story, it informs your body, it informs your imagination. And the same thing is true with just plain text about a course. Plain yeah. text about a course means nothing. So you want to do other point of views in your script, in your text, uh, for the thing that you're selling so that it comes alive for the audience. Right. And they, and they feel it, right. It's not, yes. this isn't just about words. There's an emotion and there's a feeling that people have when they buy something. And number one, you have to always tell your story first. And number two you know, you make the offer, you ask the client, like, this is what I have to sell. This is what I'm teaching, but let's go deeper than that and have the stories and the point of views of the client, of you, of why this course matters so that you, when you're, when you're up there training and teaching, there's levels to it. There's depth to it, right? It's not yeah. just black and white words on a page. Okay. I, I love that. And I, and I teach my students to do a round one of scripting and just get the content down and those pieces for the transformation. And then in round two, add those stories that you and I are such an advocate and Bo are such an advocate of. Uh, I was talking to a, a done for you client the other day, and he just came back from Alaska where he's passionate about shooting ducks. And he was talking about this great story about shooting ducks. It was uh, negative 11 and all this stuff. And I was like, you need to include this in the course content. And he looked at me like I was crazy, right? And I'm like, these are the kind of stories, your personal stories, your journeys that we need to pepper throughout that people, why do people discount that? Why do people think like, oh, folks don't want to hear about that? I think that they feel like the story should match exactly what they're talking about in yes. the moment. Um, yes. which isn't, I mean, there, there is some truth to it that, that though there, it, they should align, but there's always a message in there that you can bring back to the product or the course or the script or what you're teaching. So even though you might think that it's just like some silly story, human beings love story. That's the first thing that we were, we were told stories when we were little, like cavemen used to tell stories. So you want to meet people with what they have a natural kind of instinct and draw to and stories are that that's it. So if you can find stories that are very personal to you and weave them into your course content and the way you're selling it or the way you're teaching it, you're just going to get people to kind of like instinctually be drawn to you, Yeah, you know, I, because I it's, it's just part of our nature. Storytelling is part, part of our nature of and don't be are. so linear about it. It's not linear. Like it's not thinking like, well, this has to go with this and I teach this. So I have to tell the story about that. No, it's all just about connection, connection and allowing people to get to know you more and into your life and into like what makes you tick, right? Yeah. Like yep. that guy and that client of yours that was in, in Alaska, negative 11 degrees shooting ducks 
that tells us a lot about who that dude is. I'm like, yeah. I want to work with that guy. He seems like he's kick-ass and cool. And or dedicated someone, and committed, right. Or, right you know, whatever. and able to like go through adversity and freeze his yes. ass off. Like yes. that stuff, like that just shows exactly who that guy is. And that'll tell me whether that's that's my guy or that's not my guy. Right. So it's really important to have that distinction. And that's what story does for you. Okay. I love that. Uh, let's talk about before I'm going on camera and I get in my head. I'm sure if they're listening right now, you get, how do you stay out of your head, Dawn? How do you just like deliver on camera and get in the flow? I think it's just all repetition and practice. Um, the more you can do it, the more you can get on camera, the more you can practice, the more you can put yourself out there, the easier it will be. Um, like I, we, we do an event, uh, and I tell my story at the event and, you know, I tell the same story. I tell it over and over every event and I'm nervous every time. And I'm in my head. Are you, are you nervous? Are oh, you in yes, your head? every time I'm like dying, <laughs> but I definitely, like, I don't eat lunch and I have, I'm in the theater by myself. And then, and then when I'm mic'd, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can hear myself in the theater. This is super weird. So like, it's just about those repetitions and the rehearsal process. And the more I do it, the more comfortable I get, or the more I do it, the more I understand, Hey, the audience is who I need to connect with. Don't worry about Dawn. So like, even right now when you're, it's like, I know you guys need the information and that's more important to me is to get you that information than to worry about how I feel or what I look like, you know, and it's just, it just takes practice. Um, I don't meditate personally, but I'm assuming there's people on this, this call and listening on this podcast that do meditate. Yes. What is med? What does great meditation take? It takes practice, right? Really great meditators that are getting into that zone are just constantly like being present, being present, being in the moment being right. So it's the same thing when you're speaking, when you're teaching, when you're on stage, when you're having that call. So it's really about being present, listening. I mean, I love bringing in these old acting stories, but yes, please. all the little like exercises we used to do were just about listening. You would do like little practice acting exercises with another person. And it was all about listening. So it was like, you know, you have to be present. So I don't know, maybe all those years of just of the training on camera and being in a scene with another person and having to listen, even though I'm now speaking, I'm speaking to you. But even when I'm on a stage, it's about what's coming at me. What am I getting from the audience? What am I hearing? What am I feeling? So it's being present in the moment and aware that it's not about you. It's about the other person. Okay. So I, I think that's great. And you and I, I think are both proponents of getting out there, going live as much as you can. Like if you can't do live talks, like in person, then go live on Instagram, go live on Facebook and, and just practice. And that's how you get more comfortable, right? Yep. Yeah. That's how you become more you, you know, yes. um, and, you know, and there's warmups, right? So like there's, there's things you can do to become more connected to you. Um, it might be meditation before you go live on Instagram or on a stage. Um, you know, Bo teaches this incredible warm up called the sacred six, and it's just all about getting connected to you. So what gets you connected? Like, can you go for a walk? Can you do breathing exercises? Um, you know, Bo's sacred six, can you write before you go live? It's like some, like, let's get you connected to who you are. So that comes out more in your camera work and your trainings and your stage performances and your keynotes. Like we just want more of you because that's what people connect with is a real authentic person who's present and shares themselves. Okay. I love this. And, and you've given me feedback to more, like one of the greatest gifts you've ever given me is giving me feedback on my presentations. I love it. Everyone doesn't get that gift. So what's the best way to get feedback on how you're delivering? Do you have like any tips on that? I feel like, and it's, I mean, I can even use you as an example. So you're just, just so intelligent. Um, your content creation, the way you build courses, the way you prepare speakers to, to, to take that, you know, next step and go live and train and everything you do to prepare them to get ready for that. Like you're the best at that. And you have so much knowledge and so much information, but you have this huge history in your life of how you got there. And I even felt like when I was watching you speak, like, great, we're like eating this up because it's great content, but you got, we got to know like some fun stories and some cool stuff or some things where Gina may have felt like 
not on top of her game because that's the part that makes us feel more connected to you. So I think when you're look, you might be the smartest person in the world with the best content, but there has to be moments in your life where you struggled or you were unsure. And though that's where your clients are. So if you can't share that, then they're not going to connect with you. If that's the easiest way to create that bond and that relationship. And, you know, so I think, I think when you guys are looking at this and you're listening to this and I've shared different things, I'd say practice and rehearsal is key. Warming up is key. Making sure you're comfortable with the material and the content and the scripting. And then where can we bring you to what you're selling and teaching? Like, where are those moments where you can say, even if, even if you mess up, you can say like, oh gosh, you know, I, that, you know, you just go through Cause that's when we see that little glimpse of you and that's what the audience wants. So find those places where you can show more of yourself. You can be more open and um, they'll choose you and they'll buy from you if they feel like they know you. So that's what I started with, right? I started with, they're not buying your course. They haven't even seen your course. They buy you. So if you haven't worked on that and the expression of that and put yourself out there in a way that people can feel like they know you and can connect with you, then they're, they're in the end, they're not going to buy the course. So I just think that's, it doesn't matter how amazing it is and how shiny it is and how perfect it is. Right. Yeah. They're not going to want it. No, you're absolutely right. They're, they're buying into you. And I think sometimes we dis we discount that, right. We just think, no, they're buying the transformation, but you're absolutely right. They're, they're choosing you because you stand out from, you love their story or you connect with them or you're building rapport with them because of a story that they tell or, or a piece that they shared. Yeah. And you've got to, and you've got to get vulnerable. And I know that's hard. So I'm, you know, I'm working on that too. Right. So, because I, I also feel like I feel vulnerable inside, right. Everything you're saying, like, I feel completely vulnerable, but if I don't share that, then they're not going to know. Right. Right. Yeah. And like, there's got to be some cool stories about like how you got to where you are now. Yeah. And those are fun for people to hear. That's how we feel like we know you. So um, think about those in, in, in your own business as you're, you're working through these courses and your expertise and what you want to build. Like, why are you teaching this stuff? Like, yeah. what does this all mean? Like, was it something you saw when you were little? Was it, you know, I'm a producer and I run events and I run my husband's company, but I threw every party in high school that you could possibly imagine. Like I- <laughs> was like the party. I, I like, I rented the bus. I booked the restaurant. I rented the hotel. I got the balloons. I made sure all the food was out. Like I took care of everybody. Like I love taking care of people. You were a producer that, from the very beginning. From and the very beginning. Right. And I, and I literally it. planned my own fifth birthday party. So like, I actually had to stop because I wanted to see if somebody could surprise me and make, and like, I felt like I was beginning to being taken care of, but I always did it for myself. So that's completely what I do now. Um, a hundred, like a hundred percent, that's my role, right. With my husband and I, and, and what we do together. So it's just funny. Like there's definitely a purpose to what you do, to what you teach. And there's moments in your life that have led you to that. And it's just fun to share those. And I think it lets people in, in a different way that they're not used to seeing an yes. expert do. Yes. I love that. And I know we could have talked about being on camera. We've talked about story. I'm so glad we talked about the value of story. I want to have you back on to talk about developing business relationships because you are a mastermind when it comes to that. And in the meanwhile, where can listeners find out more or like work with you and Bo develop, like being on camera and their personal stories, all that good stuff. Like where's a great place to start? Yeah. So I would go to boeason.com and uh, you can opt in there. There's amazing content, uh, training, there's guides you can download. Um, all that um, our amazing Gina has um, <laughs> had her hands in. So um, even just out of curiosity to see her brilliance and um, what she's been able to put together, you know, it's, I would say it's great for you to learn more from Bo and from, from what we do together, but also to see how Gina's taken someone like Bo with a very strong voice and put it into some applicable tools that people can use to get better. So, um, yeah, you'll get, you get, uh, to benefit both, both from Bo and from Gina there.
Yeah, so that's awesome. And I, I talk about Bo all the time on this podcast. So, and it is it is an honor, you know that, to work with you and Bo. I just love you both so much. And thank you for taking the time. I know you're busy right now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm building all those relationships you want to talk about next time. So I know, it's so true. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. Thank yeah. you, Don. Thank you, Gina. It was great being on. Let's review those questions that Dawn rattled off. How can I make this paragraph about my course come alive? What makes me excited about it? What do I love about this course? Who needs this course? How can I connect with their struggles or the reason that they need this course? And how can I empathize with them? I love how these questions get me out of my own head and into the space of who I'm serving. Because I think when you do that, the butterflies and jitters tend to go away. If you want to hear more about what Bo and Dawn teach, especially that connecting through stories piece, go to boeason.com and download his story guide and really anything else he has to offer. I hope you got some tips you can use from this episode. Next week, I'm giving you tools to help figure out your next step. If you should launch or make another move in the next few months. Please rate and review this episode, especially if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and subscribe. Until next week, go create, be you and be brilliant and get it done.